Howdy folks, I'm Rick from the Luminary Shop and welcome back to my channel where I build and work on lamps from the 1800s and the early 1900s. I'm currently in the project of making a batch of hitch wagon lamps. Now we've started out and made a bunch of pieces and I'm in the process now of putting those pieces together into sub-assemblies and actual parts for these hitch wagon lamps. There are many, many steps to making lamps from scratch. And many of you have said you want to see all the details and not to leave anything out. Well, I'm trying to do that and there's a lot to do, so let's get with it. Well, this is where I left off in the last video. You can kind of see where we're going, but we still have a lot to do. The chimney tubes need to fit to the curved top of the lamp body. I've developed this pattern so that I can pre-cut them before I solder them into a tube. This simple soldering jig will help me make sure that each part is identical and everything will fit together when I go to do the final assembly.
You may recall an earlier video where I worked over these cast brackets so that I could send them off and have them polished before I got to this step. The brass casting is about 3 16ths of an inch thick and I want to solder it onto the case of this lamp which is only about 20 thousandths of an inch thick. The casting will require considerably more heat to make a good solder bond than the thin case material. So here I am applying a thin coating of solder to the casting. This process is called tinning or buttering. I use a small line level to make sure that everything is square and true. This collar is the base of the bottom of the lamp. It also must be square and true so that everything lines up when the lamp is put together.
This collar forms the foundation for the chimney. It also must be square and true to the rest of the lamp. After the break, I'll be moving to some of the smaller parts that go inside these lamps and actually make them functional to where they'll accept either oil burners or 12 volt sockets. See you in a minute. This part will be soldered on the inside of the lamp. It's what allows the lamp to be convertible to either oil or 12 volts. This little jig assures that each part is of the correct diameter and every one is identical to the other. Helps make sure that all the parts will fit together. I'm using both a right-handed and a left-handed shear here to cut the retaining arms that, when fixed with a piece of piano or spring wire, will hold both the 12-volt sockets and the oil burners.
These standard automotive sockets will accept an 1157 base bulb, either incandescent or LED. Well, we started out with the raw materials, brass, solder, glass, and the like. And step by step, we're getting closer to having these hitch wagon lamps put together and ready to go to the plater. We're getting closer, but we still have a ways to go. Now, one of my clients that uses these particular lamps has sent me a bunch of pictures of the lamps on different wagons. And as we get closer to the end of this series, I'll be sharing some of those pictures with you. But for now, thanks for following along, and I'll see you next time.